Welcome to the Kara's Cures a digital show and podcast where we explore the cutting edge of wellness. I'm Kara Sundlin. Well, this episode is sponsored by the Center for Advanced Reproductive Services. For many, allergies are certainly acting up right now. Maybe you got the sniffling nose, the itchy eyes, feeling tired. It's kind of the dreaded time for spring. And joining us now to talk about natural ways of calming your seasonal allergies is Dr. Artemis Morris. Thanks for being with us, Doc. Thank you, Kara. Always a pleasure. So a lot of people go right to the drugstore and start buying, you know, whether it be Claritin, Zyrtec, all of that, and uh, maybe that works for some people, but there's, uh, for some people, they don't want to become dependent on it, or they just need other ways to still make it better. And doing some natural things can make a huge difference? Absolutely. There are scientific studies showing that some of the things in food, some supplements can be very helpful, even some things like using the neti pot or acupuncture, because the allergy medication can come with side effects like brain fog, fatigue. So having alternatives is always a good idea if you want to minimize the side effects and still get good clinical results. Mm -hmm. Or even if you're taking the medicine, you can certainly uh, stay on a lower dose or make it better. Let's talk about food. What types of food could help our allergies? Uh, yeah, there are wonderful types of food that are high in something called antioxidants. And in particular, there's one antioxidant called quercetin, Q-U-E-R-C-I-T-I-N, and that is an antioxidant that works like a natural antihistamine. So that's found in citrus fruits, um, oranges, even lemons. It's also high in things like broccoli, onions. So I, you know, a traditional Greek salad has raw onion and tomatoes and lettuce. So, so that's one way to get it in. And then you can also see it high in certain herbs as well. So um, there are, are certain herbs like nettles. Urtica diosa is the Latin name. And you can see NAC, N-acetylcysteinine is another supplement that works like a natural mucolytic and is used also pharmaceutically as well as a nutritional supplement. So NAC, I know we talked about that during COVID, but uh, in Europe it's used uh, the way we would use uh, a prescription, but it helps with any kind of bronchial, lungs, that sort of thing. So you can get some NAC and you might get relief from that sinus congestion. Yes, yeah, so some of the same supplements and foods that are used for nasal congestion and fatigue that characterizes seasonal allergies can be used also for respiratory illness. So this, we do see some of the same things, the high antioxidants like the citrus fruit and the onions. And then we see NAC and quercetin. Um, those are also used for helping with any mucus or congestion and help also with detoxification. So some of the same products you could use. So if you're going out to get some quercetin or some NAC, you want to eat the broccoli and the cauliflower and all that too, but if you want a little extra, then how do you take nettles? Is that just for a tea? And how should we take the quercetin and the NAC? So first, especially if you have allergies, you want to know what your allergies are. So you never want to take any herbs or supplements that might uh, you know, make the allergies worse. But in general, these are very safe products and always consult your doctor. But nettles it is a weed. It grows worldwide and has been used for thousands of years as an anti-inflammatory. And nettle you can get as an organic tea. It also is high in minerals. And it is also really helpful for that histamine reaction. So you can get it as a tea. You can make a tincture if you've got it growing in your garden. Just be careful because it is called stinging nettle. And so it's one of those herbs that you're walking in the woods. It will sting you. It doesn't last as long as poison ivy. But, you know, you, you'll feel a little sting from it. And that's why it has some of those anti-inflammatory benefits. And so that can be helpful for allergies. And many of the products that I use in my practice combine vitamin C with NAC, nettles, and quercetin. And I see really good results. And it's interesting because actually children and young adults suffer from allergies, especially like the seasonal allergies, more than other populations, even though it's about 20 to 30 percent worldwide. So having something safe and effective to do at all ages is also really wonderful. And my son has seasonal allergies, and I've always just given him 
the Zyrtec, which doesn't mean that we can't, I guess, but I want to, you know, I, I, I have given some local honey and these other things too, but it, to get it at that therapeutic level, uh, you have some supplements I can see over there. Like what would you, I guess more than just eating broccoli, there's a therapeutic level if you're going to try and do this without, you know, using another over-the-counter medicine. Yes, it's true. And everyone's different. You know, that's the hallmark of true integrative medicine. Naturopathic medicine is personalizing because there are many sources of inflammation. And when you have seasonal allergies, you want to address it, you know, specifically, but also individually. So my son also has seasonal allergies and you know, we've been using the dehist that has vitamin C, NAC, quercetin very effectively. So in many of my patients, they don't need medication, especially when we're combining it with acupuncture and there's an acupressure point that you could use to open the sinuses and combining it with good quality food, like two servings of veggies and fruit daily. But you can safely use many of these supplements along with your medication as long as you've talked to your doctor about it. So they are pretty safe and effective. I see you have some over there. Uh, I know on your website, drartemis.com or artemiswellnesscenter.com, if you want to book a consultation. And again, it can be via Zoom so, uh, or you know, a telemedicine if people are not uh, able to get to Milford, Connecticut. But uh, can you uh, just tell me some of the brands or some of the supplements you do like if people are looking for them? Yes, and, and people can go to my website. You know, if you're seeing an integrative or functional practitioner, I'm sure they'll have very good specific advice for you. But um, if you want to see some of the brands I use, you can go to drartemis.com and there's a drop down there that says supplements. And you can see the different brands I use. And for Metagenics, there's like Sinuplex that I like a lot um, for whole scripts or Zymogen. I do like their Aller DHQ, works very effectively. And if you want to go under full script or well of eight, um, I like the dehist um, from that company. So th there are many options and some of these have very similar formulas, but um, in general, you know, start with the diet. It, a lot of great studies out there, even one from Crete, rural Crete that showed children had less sinusitis and allergies just by eating two servings of fruits and veggies daily, which is something that sounds like Wow, imagine kids eating two servings of fruit and veggies daily, right? It's kind of incredible for our culture. Well, yeah, <laughs> we try, right? That's always, you know, and I know that parents are on the run and everything, you know, so even just finding, they, fortunately, my kids actually don't mind broccoli. They like broccoli, so that's good. But trying to, for sure, trying to get the diet. Um, now, the neti pot. Um, there's that, that might be, I, I think that would be hard for me to get my son to do a neti pot, but I do have him do the nasal, just the saline spray. And he seems to be okay with that. But at some point, I don't know, I, I know it's good to explain why we want a neti pot and how often we should do that. Or could we use the saline spray? I call it the nose blaster. Does that help at least a little bit if, if you can't get your family to do the neti pot? <laughs> Absolutely. And I love that the nose blaster, that's a great one because it definitely describes what's going on. So allergies, the reason why they create congestion and mucus in the sinus areas, and then subsequently fatigue because that's inflammation. And those allergy symptoms are because things that we're allergic to our environment and also food allergies work the same way, but that's internally, but they come in from our nose. And you know, one of the reasons why allergies are up um, is because we're starting out with being exposed to a lot of toxins and things in our environment, in our air, and that further contributes to our sensitivity. So when you use, you know, whether it's, um, there's also a nice product called X Clear I like to use that's available from uh, Full Script or Wellevate. When you use a neti pot or even a saline solution, and I know um, I did the acupuncture on our earlier segment, I could actually show that. Um, or kind of describe it for people who are listening. But with the neti pot, you could even use a cup. If you have it like some kind of paper cup and put a little bit of salt water in it, make sure it's clean water, that's really important. Um, and then add a little bit of salt. And then you literally just put it in one nostril and you tilt and it comes out, out the, the other, other side. side. So it's like you've gone to the pool and had a little too much uh, 
fun in the pool. It's the yeah. same situation, but you're actually rinsing out those allergens. And when you rinse them out with the nasal spray, um, with the neti pot, then you're less likely for it to go into your system and create an allergic reaction. So it's very effective. I have some patients, that's all they do when allergy seasons start. You know, they might do acupuncture plus this and maybe some supplements, but, you know, doing a little neti pot or a little nasal rinse in the shower one to two times a day can be very effective way of preventing that allergen from taking hold on your immune system. You know, I've also heard that we should be washing our pillowcases a lot or tell your kids, you know, I, I know sometimes young kids don't love the shower so much, but making sure that they rinse off or shower before they go to sleep at night to get the pollen off of them. They may not even realize it's, it, it's on their skin or in their hair. Is that right? Absolutely right, Kara. Yes. Yeah. So all of these things, so the way that things uh, irritate our immune system is certainly they get in through the mucous membranes, you know, you know, that's why the neti pot nasal rinse is good. But yeah, even on our skin or getting on our eyes, like you might not realize how many touch, times you touch your eyes during the day, but that will irritate your eyes as well. So a little um, shower, you know, if you're outside gardening, come in and, you know, take a quick shower to get rid of some of that allergen that could be on your skin or in your eyes. Absolutely. That's absolutely true. And then, you know, the one thing too, with food again, that we talked about is the local honey, which is kind of fun Yeah. that, you know, I find it fascinating that the same pollen and the same plants that are used to pollinate local honeys is a way almost of uh, like a natural immunotherapy where you get used to it, your body does not react to it. So, you know, people do allergy shots, but it's kind of, uh, the mechanism is similar with the local honey where you're eating honey that's been pollinated by bees going from all these plants and flowers you might be allergic to, but your immune system doesn't mount as strong a reaction to it because you're getting a little bit of a dose similar to the immunotherapy. So that's kind of one of the mechanisms that's- Yeah, uh, so a little bit of honey uh, gives you- little bit of honey gives you a little bit of exposure and then your body starts to so i know it's in connecticut we're lucky we have a lot of people who keep bees and there's lots of farmers markets and local honey um, but if you're going to get honey a how much do you take and how often and b i assume you mean like we need to really get the local the good honey just getting some in the teddy bear at the store is probably not going to have much of an effect Absolutely true. In fact, there are some really great local beekeepers and I met um, someone locally. Uh, she wrote, I think it's Honey for Dummies. Um, I met her at a conference at a Mediterranean Diet Roundtable conference. And, you know, there is a whole world of honey out there in terms of quality, in terms of, you know, what what's real honey, what's not, because you give sugar. And I had bees back in my farm in Pennsylvania way back when, and it's not easy to be a beekeeper. You really have to be aware of the environment. You have to um, take good care of them. But if you go to any local health food store, you can find some really great honey. And there are definitely a lot of beekeepers. I would do, you know, even if you do a teaspoon a day, that's fine. I don't think there's a real consensus on exact dosage. I did see a few studies on it, but, you know, even if you do like a teaspoon a day, I think, you know, in a tea, that's maybe nettle tea, a nettle tea with some local honey in it sounds like the perfect combo for allergies. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, for kids, I know my kids don't mind that the honey goes in the oatmeal or on top of the cereal. They like the honey in that respect. So I guess you could do it for that way, too. Um, you could just take the honey by the spoonful, I guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, my kids wouldn't mind that either. You know, we've got some great local honeys. Okay, so uh, also acupuncture. I actually, I used to work in Washington, D.C., and I worked with someone um, that would literally fly to this particular acupuncturist once a year because he claimed that as long as he did that, he could live in D.C. and not have allergies. So for somebody who's never tried this, um, you know, is, how does acupuncture help us, and, 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 and do you need to do it, how often you need to do it, or when do you need to go if people are already having symptoms? Yes, and I love that story. And, you know, definitely it's true. So for many of my patients, they come specifically for allergies and they might even come to the office specifically for nasal congestion. It works very quickly. And then allergies, as we talked about, is really an over 
reaction of your immune system. So it's inflammation. And acupuncture is a technique that is anti-inflammatory. It helps your immune system to regulate, also helps hormones, helps circulation, helps with pain. There are many mechanisms involved with acupuncture. It's very safe and effective, but you absolutely want to go to a licensed acupuncturist. And you'll see that after their name, L period AC. Myself and Dr. Sylvia in the office are licensed acupuncturists. So we went for an additional three years for a master's after naturopathic medical school. And you can find that by going to nccaom.org. But I'll show, you know, let's do this again. Shall we do a little demo? Yes. What do you think, Kara? For those who are listening in the car, I'm going to describe what's about to happen because we did this on Great Day Connecticut. Just to show you it doesn't hurt, um, uh, you're about to put the acupuncture needle right in the pressure point um, right here on Kara's Cure. So if you're watching on the app, you're going to see it. Boom. <laughs> I can't <laughs> so even the see point it so tiny. Is... <laughs> I wish I was there, Kara. I would, you know, but next time. But in between your eyebrows, like right in the center, Center, um, is a point called yin tang and it's located right in the middle right where those wrinkles tend to form oh. um, in between the eyes in between the eyebrows so you can press on it and you can use some acupressure to open up the sinuses that way it's also very calming but what i'm doing i'm using a very thin acupuncture needle with a guide tube these are just small disposable needles i'll pinch the area and i don't know if it's possible to see that but i'm just gonna Plop it right in there and put, and I did not scream as you can tell. So yeah. It's right in there. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> now, for people who haven't done that before, they're probably like, Ouch. like, I've got young patients that do this, and it opens up that sinus congestion. The results can be pretty immediate. And then there's also points here, too. Maybe we'll save that for the live one. They have little whiskers. <laughs> okay. And if you're going to do acupuncture, how many sessions do you need or how often? And, and then are you kind of just good for a year or how does it work? So again, hallmark of integrative medicine, everyone's different, but in general, you want to go in for, for allergies absolutely seasonally. Like, so starting like a month before they begin, whenever your particular time is, and you want to do one to two times a week for four to six weeks. That's a general recommendation. Um, but you can come in, if you're acutely suffering from allergies, you can go to a licensed acupuncturist and get some very amazing and astounding symptomatic relief. But you do wanna do a series of acupuncture treatments because it builds up um, over time and it's very safe and effective. Okay. Well, if you happen to live in Connecticut, you could go to the, Ar uh, the Artemis Wellness Center in Milford. But if you're looking for supplements or just general good, sound, naturopathic advice, you can go to drartemis.com. You mentioned you have a drop-down menu for um, your supplements there. And I know you do a lot, again, with telemedicine. Um, so don't have to get rid of your regular doctor. I've had the blessing of speaking to you about both. So you've got someone to kind of help you with the improving your immune system and all that. And then your regular doc to do those regular things as well. So you can work together. Absolutely. That's the best patient centered medicine. We're working together, working together. All right, Dr. Artemis, we <laughs> appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kara. Be well. You too. And uh, if you want more information to be well, you can go back on the app and look at more episodes of Kara's Cures. Also, join the Kara's Cures Facebook group to search Kara's Cures or follow me on social media at Kara Sundlin. I post this content there. Have a great day, everyone. Be well.